Welcome back to Design Smith. Is it possible to fall in love with a poster? To anybody out there who says no, why does this poster exist? I mean, seriously, I was scrolling through Pinterest yesterday and I see probably close to 100 posters per day, but nothing has ever caught my eye quite like this poster. I've never seen this poster before and I've never seen anything quite like it. So what is it about this poster that has me thinking, if I could marry a poster, I totally would. Well, we're gonna take a look at this poster and break down its elements in this video. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so this poster is based in Swiss design principles, and it definitely has a little bit of a lean of minimalism as well. And of course, minimalism was born directly out of Swiss design, but sometimes the two of them can kind of exist with each other while not necessarily leaning in one direction. So enough talk, what I wanna do is build out the overall structure of this poster. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so here is the overall structure of this poster in relation to the shapes, and I noticed a few interesting things. The first is that this square right here is not a square, it's a rectangle. I mean, look at the size over here, 6.8 by 6.0. And that's crazy because when you first look at this, you just automatically assume that it's a perfect square. Now, I would be very interested to see the original grid that went into this, but what I have is a JPEG, and that JPEG is the result of all kinds of different saves and everything. You never know what the original grid actually looked like. So I really have no way of knowing what the original structure was. This circle right here, my best guess is that it is a perfect circle, and it's very close to 4.75. This poster could have been scaled down, scaled up. We have no idea what the original sizing was either. And another interesting thing is that these two rectangles down here are not the same size. And probably the most interesting thing to me is this outer square, or really it's a rectangle. So 7.8 by 7.5 or 7.6 if you wanna round up. But then when you get into the inner shapes, these are both squares. So I think that one thing that we've learned so far from this poster is that not every single shape needs to be perfect. In fact, when you have imbalance in a poster, it actually creates further interest. So it's very interesting to me the way this poster was laid out. Even though it is very, very simple, it has some complex geometry going on. And we haven't even started talking about the color palette yet. All right, so next up, I wanna build the structure out for the type sizes here. And I really wanna do an analysis on this because I think it's very interesting. So I'm not 100% sure on what font this is, but I'm just gonna use Acumen Variable Concept. Let's drop the opacity down to 50% so that way I can easily lay this on top. So we'll scale this to roughly the same size. I think we can say that this is probably 43 points, maybe 43 or 44. Again, it's always hard to tell these kinds of things when you don't have the original file. And I'm just gonna increase our tracking until we get right about here. And this is pretty darn close, so I'm just gonna leave that right there. All right, now I'm just gonna duplicate this down and we'll go down here. One thing that's very interesting about this is that it gets significantly smaller on the next level down of type. So let's see what size this actually is here. So it's roughly about 24 points. I'm just gonna bring this exactly to 24. And now let's duplicate this down here again. And I believe that says 1110. So I'm guessing this is October 11th because the next number over looks like a 12. Now let's lay this on top of here and we will scale this down to about right there. We need to look at where the actual baseline sits. So it's about right there. So we'll just say 12 points and then we'll just give this a couple of spaces here. All right, now we can select this and just copy this over here. All right, so we've got our type laid down. Now let's take a look at the relationship between the sizes of the type. Okay, so this one right over here, this is 43 point. And then we'll bring this over here and this is 24. And then bring down our third level, which is 12. Let's bring down the tracking right here so we can easily see these numbers. And then let's study the relationship between these numbers themselves. So this is what I do. I will enter 24 divided by 43, and that tells me this is around 56% of the type size. So this is 56%, and we'll just lay that right there. And then 24 down to 12, that's 50%. So if you were gonna be laying out a poster that's similar to this, you have to figure out what your base size is. And really figuring out what your base size is, it really is kind of up to you. The subject matter also plays a big role in this. Just looking at the overall structure and design of this poster, I could tell before I even read it that it was Tycho. If you're at all familiar with Tycho, he's an amazing musician and he uses excellent design to accompany his music. And if Tycho was twice the size, it wouldn't have nearly as much impact as it does. The fact that the base type starts out so small is just one of the many things that makes this poster so interesting. 
And while yes, you can take measurements of the overall width of the poster and the height of the poster and figure out some kind of a percentage there, it's usually best to plan out a grid of some type and then set your base font size based on that. And I'll actually make a video on that very soon. So I would say in general, if you're gonna have three different type sizes here, this is a pretty good formula to work with. However, that 56% may be a little bit arbitrary. So I would say probably bring it down to 55% or maybe even up to 60. And then the 50% jump down from the second to the third is totally fine. But overall, I just love how this entire poster is laid out and how it's presented. Okay, and lastly, let's take a look at the color palette. So I am by no means a color theory expert. However, one thing I will say is that these colors grab me instantly. One thing that you don't see a lot of in design is red and orange right next to each other. And I don't really know where that comes from. Maybe it's because complementary colors have been drilled so much into our heads. It's just possible that designers can get a little bit nervous when it comes to putting these two colors next to each other. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's something that I wish I saw more of. But these colors just work so well with each other, and I think it's a beautiful arrangement of colors. And this even works on a lighter background. It's pretty cool. So in just taking a look at this, most likely the color that you first saw in this was the orange. And since that's the first color that's presented to you, it makes sense that you would have some kind of a complementary color just kind of right here in the middle of the design. It's a really cool inclusion of the color, and this poster is a great example that you don't have to use one singular color more than once. And yeah, sure, we've got like a lighter white color here and a black color right here, but those generally are not primary colors. Those are used as secondaries or accents. All right, let's go ahead and put the background color right here, and I'll just color drop this. And now we'll go in here and set this probably to the same color as this. All right, so here's the overall structure of the poster. Now let's copy it and bring it into Photoshop and add the effects. Okay, we have it here in Photoshop, but I wanna go back here into Illustrator and take a look at the effect that we've got here. At first when I saw this, I thought it was kind of a grainy effect, but it looks more like a paper effect. So I grabbed a paper texture right here that's kind of in between. It's like a good mixture of paper and grain. So we're gonna overlay this on our poster here, and it is looking a little harsh, so we're gonna to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Now I'm only gonna blur this maybe one or two pixels at the most. Two pixels works just fine. And now we'll go through our blending modes until we find something that we like. Color burn is interesting and it is making those colors more saturated, so I do like that. Okay, after going through everything, I think that divide is probably gonna be the closest that we've got, although the effect is a little bit too harsh. So all we have to do is drop the opacity down to about 50% or so, and that looks good. So here is the recreated Tycho poster that I fell in love with yesterday. This is just a beautiful design. I love the relationship between the type sizes, the use of white space, and the gorgeous color palette. I don't remember the last time a poster caught my eye quite like this one did. Of course, I could be really overthinking this and just being weird, but that's to be expected anyway. So yes, I'm totally going to glaze on this poster, and I don't care who knows it. I hope this video was informative or maybe even entertaining to you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.